Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to discuss income elasticity of demand. And you'll notice um, in the playlist for elasticity, I have included uh, a video prior to the one I'm making right now, uh, in which I'm discussing how income impacts demand and how demand increases, leading to an increase in total revenue. So that's a useful video to continue our discussion on income elasticity of demand. In that video, I used Singapore as a great example of rising per capita income and what would be happening to demand for normal goods and luxury goods over time. What's interesting about Singapore is that when it declared independence in 1962, its per capita income was 490 US dollars. And we can see that in the course of, let's say, 60 years, from 1962 to um, 2020, 2021 almost, you see a dramatic increase in their per capita income. Now it's gradual, but by the 1990s, it just begins to explode. Here we have uh, the Asian financial crisis of 1997, so per capita income's falling. It recovers, and then from 2000 onward, it's just steady growth. Now here we see a dip due to the 2008 economic crisis, but then it just continues to really rise. Um, and then it, it, it dips again in 2015, and then it goes up to $59,590. So in the course of a person's lifetime, Singapore did a fantastic job in increasing their per capita income from $400 approximately to $59,000, just impressive per capita income growth. So the incomes are rising. Now, part of that is due to their decision to really build a incredibly strong education system, uh, which had improved the quality of their labor and thus labor being high skilled can command a high income. Great decision on their part to invest in quality education and we see the impact of that. So since we are using Singapore as that example of rising income, we can then talk about income elasticity of demand and how a rise in income impacts the demand for normal and inferior goods and services. So let's take a few notes about the formula and how we can illustrate that. So YED, I'll just write in here and then we'll erase it. Um, YED is equal to the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in income. The symbol for income is Y. <clears throat> we'll just make a note, and we'll see that in macro as well. Income, the symbol for that is Y in economics. And we also want to remember, I, I keep bringing this up because it's so important in economics, Percent change is calculated by the final value minus the initial value divided by the initial value times 100. And on an exam for the IB, they can give you data regarding income and data regarding quantities of consumption, and you, they would ask you to calculate YED. So you would just take the final val value minus the initial divided by initial times 100, for uh, quantity, and you do the same thing for income and divide the two, and you'd get a decimal value or some value. <clears throat> so, what are the values that we get with YED, and what does it indicate? Well, there's three uh, outcomes with YED. One is YED being less than one. If it's less than one, that indicates that the good is an inferior good. I'm sorry, I should say, let's start with this. If it's less than zero, all right? So if YED is less than zero, that indicates that the good is an inferior good, okay? So let's say that YED is equal to, let's say it's just negative two. So we wanna remember it's negative two over one, all right? Using this formula, so for example, if income, were to go up, if income was to rise by 1%, and we see the quantity of demand decreasing by 
2%, that must mean that it's an inferior good. Why? I'm making more money, thus I'm buying less of a particular good. So this could be the case maybe, you know, in the supermarket. In the supermarket, you'll see some generic brands of cereal and ice cream. Perhaps the quality and the taste isn't that good. And so as income is rising, people will switch away from con uh, consuming those generic products. In Spain, we call them marca blanca. Okay. What else? YED. Okay. If YED is greater than zero, then that indicates that the good is a normal good where consumption rises positively with a rise in income. So here we have YED uh, being greater than zero. So, uh, you know, let's say, for example, that YED equals, let's say, 0 0.5. And I'm going to use this example again in just a second. So it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5 over 1. So as income rises by 1%, then the quantity demanded increases by 0.5%. So you're making more money. You're uh, demanding more of this particular good. Now, <clears throat> normal goods can be divided into two parts. Right? If we get a value above zero, economists want to distinguish if it is less than one or greater than one. So three, let's say if YED is, actually, let me uh, create a little bit more space here. If YED, the value of YED, is less than one, but greater than zero, it's a normal good, but it's what we call a necessity. So your income is rising and you're buying things that you need, such as food, perhaps of a better quality than the inferior um, food that you might have been previously consuming when um, your income was lower. Housing, uh, healthcare, these are all necessities. Uh, if we get a value that is greater than one, your income is rising, but your consumption of particular good is rising more rapidly. That's what we call a luxury good. These are goods that you don't need. All right, so luxury goods. So let's just be, let's just go over that quickly again. So if YED is less than zero, it's an inferior good. So as your income is rising, you're switching away from that product. Perhaps your income is rising. Instead of taking public transportation, you now buy a car. So the public transportation would be considered the inferior good because you've now switched over to a car. If YED is greater than zero, then it's a normal good. And we can divide into two parts. If it's between one and zero, it's a necessity. You need food, you need housing, health care. These are necessities. And if YED is greater than one, then it is a luxury. So here I gave this example of a normal good that's a necessity. All right. We have YED being 0.5. So as your income rises, your consumption of food or healthcare services or housing only increases by a marginal amount, 0.5%, 0.2%, 0.9%. Once your basic needs are met, then you can then spend the rest of your disposable income on what we call luxury goods. So luxury goods could have a YED, for example, let's say of a 4.5. 4.5 over 1, so as your income increases by 1%, your quantity of demand for luxury goods might be increasing by 4.5%. Perhaps it's going to a restaurant. A restaurant is a luxury. You can make food at home. You don't need this. But as you make more money and you cover your necessities, the money that's left over can be spent on goods that you don't need, like luxury goods. And we see that with rising income, Demand for luxury goods rises quite rapidly. Okay? So let's go ahead and illustrate this. How can we illustrate this on a graph? All right, one way of illustrating this is using our normal uh, supply and demand graph, but we won't be illustrating supply. We're just going to illustrate demand. 
Okay. So here we're going to have demand sloping downward. Perhaps it's starting. Let's just assume it's starting at this point. Here's D1. Okay. Now we're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis, but there's a third variable that is the independent variable, and that variable is income. So we're going to assume that income, which is represented by the symbol y, we're assuming in this model that income is rising, like in the example of Singapore. In Singapore, we saw income rising from $400 to almost $60,000. So income is rising, that is our assumption. Now as income rises, what happens to the demand for inferior goods? It decreases. So as Singaporeans become wealthier, their demand for inferior goods decreases. So it shifts in from D1 to D2. Okay. There's less demand for inferior goods. So here we have a YED value that's less than zero. So we can label this as inferior goods. Okay. How about demand for normal goods that are necessities? Quality food, quality health care, quality housing. As income rises, demand for that starts to increase. So it shifts out from D1 to, let's say, D3. And this is a necessity that's a normal good. So YED, in this case, is less than 1, but greater than 0. So this is a necessity that is a normal good. Okay, necessity, goods and services. Okay, how about as income rises, what happens to the demand for uh, luxury goods? It continues to rise. So demand for luxury goods rises quite rapidly. Shifts out from D1 to D4. So this is YED that is greater than 1. And these are luxury goods and services. Okay, And I want to also highlight that from D1 to D3 to D4, this entire area here is what we call normal goods. These are normal goods goods that we have categorized into either being a necessity or a luxury. Okay? Here are the inferior goods on this side, and here are the normal goods on that side. So let's go ahead and um, analyze this as we would for a paper exam for the IB. As can be seen, we have a graph, graph A, which is the market for goods and services in Singapore. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. And we're going to assume that income in Singapore is rising. Perhaps we can use some real data to support that. 1962 is at 490. So in 1962, per capita income, is it GNI or GDP? It is GNI, GNI per capita income. Gross national Income per capita per capita income was rising from four hundred ninety dollars and then it goes up to fifty nine five in twenty nineteen and then in twenty nineteen it goes up to fifty nine thousand five hundred and ninety. Uh, dollars, if that was correct. Yep. Okay. So this is what we're assuming that income is rising, right? It's going from 490 to 59,590. So what is happening to demand for goods and services in Singapore? Well, we start at D1. And at D1, as income rises, 
demand for inferior goods decreases from D1 to D2, providing a YED that's less than zero. It's a negative value, meaning that there is a negative relationship between income and the quantity of demand. So here we're saying that as income rises, the quantity demanded falls, and because of that negative causal relationship, people are switching away from these goods because they're inferior, and thus it signals that they're inferior goods. As income continues to rise, demand for normal goods that are necessities increases from D1 to D3. This indicates that there is a positive relationship between income and the quantity demanded. They're moving in the same direction. Income rises, quantity demanded increases, demand shifts out from D1 to D3, and the YED value is between zero and one. So it's a normal good, it's a necessity, but the amount of consumption is limited because, for, for example, in the case of food, you can only consume so much food uh, per day um, per person. doesn't matter if you're a multi-billionaire or you're relatively poor, uh, people consume about the same amount in a day. So they, their consumption is limited. It's between this range. As, con as incomes continue to rise, we see an even greater increase in demand from D1 to D4 for normal goods that are luxury goods. And this provides a YED that is greater than 1. So every time income goes up by 1%, the quantity demanded increases by an amount that's greater than 1%, 1 1.5, 2, 4%, 6%, etc. So as Singapore becomes wealthier, demand for luxury goods is really rising. And for any entrepreneur, they're probably going to start uh, investing and creating businesses to capture that increasing demand for luxury goods in that particular economy. Okay. And uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to cover. In the next video, we will assume falling incomes. We will draw the same thing, but just illustrate it in terms of a um, falling income. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you so much.